does water baptism save you? I'm going to answer it and I'm going to elaborate on that question because it's a very in-depth, intricate explanation because some people get really religious with it and some people get really rebellious with it. So I'm going to break it down. So the Bible says that Jesus went to John the Baptist, right? In the Gospels. And John the Baptist was like, why am I baptizing you? I, I don't, I can't even feel the sandals that you wear. Like he was like, he basically was saying, you're the Messiah. You're the Christ. Why am I baptizing you? That makes no sense. Why am I baptizing God? And that's when Jesus said, I'm being baptized to fulfill all righteousness. What does righteousness mean? Right standing with the father. So it's the first step in discipleship, water baptism. What does that mean? Discipleship means to be a follower of the way. So you have to follow the way in order to make it to heaven, right? So do you need to be water baptized to be saved? No, because the water doesn't save you, but it's the first step to discipleship. If you're not, if you're not getting baptized and you say you believe in Jesus, I would question whether you really believe or not. It's like saying, it's like saying, I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I don't got to repent of, of uh, pornography. That doesn't make sense. The Bible clearly talks about uh, about fornication, pornea. The word is pornea, um, sexual morality, and how it's demonic. You know what I'm saying? So I would say, do you really believe in Jesus? Do you not feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit to stop watching porn? It's the same thing with water baptism. If you get filled with the Holy Spirit or you believe and you repent, the first feeling like you'll get in your heart, the first wanting or desire that you'll have is to get go underwater. Because you know that your Lord and Savior did it at the age of 30 years old. He did it before he started his three-year ministry. Obviously, if the fullness of God bodily, Jesus Christ, was baptized in water, what makes you think that you don't have to? That that makes me, like, if I, as a pastor, as a brother in Christ, just as a person who believes in for real in Jesus, that's been filled with the Holy Ghost, if someone says, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I don't want to get baptized, I'll be like, yeah, you don't believe in Jesus. It just doesn't make sense. It does. It doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like someone that that says, yeah, I believe that that this house is on fire right now. I'm I, like, and if I stay in it, I'll die. And they don't run out. It's like, if you really believe, why did you stay in the house and, and get burnt up? It's because you didn't really believe you were you were lying out of your mouth. So does the water baptism save you? No, you're saved by by grace through faith. Not by works, lest any man boast, but faith without works is dead. So you're not saved by the work of baptism. You're saved by faith, right? It's faith that saves you. It's grace, right? Saved by grace through faith, not by works, but the first work that you'll naturally do because you've received the Holy Spirit, the first step of discipleship is water baptism. Why wouldn't you want to get baptized? The Bible talks about you dying with Christ. We were just, we were just reading about it in 2 Colossians today. That you die with Christ under that water, that your conscience is cleared, that you your old man dies under the water, your, your body, and you come up a new creation. You sign a divorce certificate to the world under that water, and you come up married to Jesus. You come up a new creation in Christ. Jesus was baptized. They, Paul was baptized. All of them were baptized in water, full body immersion. So why don't you get baptized? It makes me think, okay, it's obvious. I, I, the Bible says that we're not to judge with out like people outside of the body of christ the unbelievers the father judges them but we're actually allowed to judge in the body of christ amongst believers so if you're my brother in christ and you say you don't want to get baptized in water i'm allowed to judge you and say bro jesus got baptized you ain't you have no excuse you need to go into that water for real if you believe and if you don't go into the water i can sit there and be like you probably don't believe then because you're bearing bad fruit it just makes sense does that make sense god does not want to force us to do anything he wants us to do it in faith, which means it takes love. You have to really believe in Jesus to do these things. You can't repent of your sins unless you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you haven't received the power of the Holy Spirit, you're not going to you're not going to repent of sin. And I could judge you and say, no, you're not a believer. You have a form of godliness, but you're not you're denying the power thereof through your works, through your acts, what you're doing. You're living in the world. You're all, you're out there drinking and smoking. You're not saved. You're not saved. You believe in Jesus, but he hasn't became your Lord and Savior. You haven't repented. You're not saved. So some people say, oh, I've been baptized 10 years ago. I'm saved. No, you're not. Just because you got baptized in water 10 years ago don't mean you saved. 
all you did was take a bath. You might as well have got some Dove soap, some shampoo, maybe some toothpaste and a toothbrush. Maybe get, get yourself a towel, some deodorant. Go take a nice shower. Go take a nice bath. Have, have, have the pastor rub you down. Some people say, I got baptized as a baby in the Catholic church. You can't get saved as a baby. You don't even, the Bible says the process is Acts 2.38. Believe, repent, be baptized in water, receive the Holy Ghost. Be baptized in the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Ghost, right? So if you're not getting baptized and that's the process, then you don't believe and you haven't repented. So you're not going to receive the Holy Ghost. And as a baby in the Catholic church, you can't believe. You don't even know what how to speak. It's wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like I was baptized as a Catholic. I, I knew that I had to get baptized when I came to Christ for real. Because of my Catholic baptism, it doesn't make it like the Bible says there's only one baptism. Literally, there's only one baptism. And that's when you really believe. So it, you, you might have been baptized 15 times, my brother and my sister. You might have been in You, you might have went to prison, got out, got baptized, went back to prison, got out, got baptized. But let me tell you something. None of it mattered till you truly repented. When you truly surrendered. When you truly surrender and repent, that's when you get baptized or else it's just a bath. And some people say, oh, my gosh, I got baptized and I didn't really mean it. I'm cursed. No, the, you getting baptized, not really meaning it does not curse you. It's just you just took a bath. The Holy Ghost ain't worried about water baptism, but the obedience of water baptism does bring a spiritual blessing. I've seen people go under that water, come out, get deliverance. Demons start coming out. I've seen people come out that water, get baptized in the Holy Ghost, because when you move in obedience, it's pleasing to God. It's faith. The water has nothing to do with it. It's the faith. It's you saying Jesus got baptized to fulfill all righteousness. And the Bible says, believe, repent, be baptized in water, receive the Holy Ghost. I want to do it with joy and zeal because that's what my God, who I believe in and I love, wants me to do. That hits different. That's when the Holy Ghost is happy. That's when the joy of the Holy Ghost comes in. And you get delivered and you get healed out of the water. There's a spiritual blessing from your obedience and faith, not because of water. The water is the, the baptism is a public declaration of what's already happened inside of you, your faith. So this is what happened back in the in the during the early church. Right. When we read about when we, when we read in the book of Acts, the early church that was persecuted, slandered. Right. When, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, was buried and resurrected from the dead. And he came and released the word to the disciples that, he, you know, he's back and he. And he told them what they were going to go through and everything. And he says he ascended to heaven in his glorified body after 40 days. That early church, after he left and went, you know, past the clouds, seated at the right hand of the Father, that's when the Holy Ghost was poured upon all flesh, right? They had Pentecost. They were persecuted a lot. So they had house churches. They had churches in discrete areas, kind of like what's happening in China and Korea and Pakistan right now, modern day. Like, like Bibles, like, like are so rare out there. Like it's a delicacy to have a Bible here in America. We could find a Bible anywhere. We're spoiled. But in Pakistan, if they get caught with a Bible, they can get killed in China. They can get arrested. It's, it's serious. You know, they're going through real persecution and that's how the early church went through persecution. So when they were going through that, how did, how were they able to display their faith? There was no altar calls. There was no altars. There was no big building with chairs. There was none of that. They had house churches. And how they would declare their faith is through water baptism. So they would go find a river, a lake, and they would declare their faith. That would be their altar call. Their altar call would be water baptism. And they would declare it amongst, amongst, amongst the congregation, amongst the assembly, amongst everyone, the assembling body that came together. It might have been eight or nine house churches. They might have had baptism once a week. They all come together and say, hey, let's go to the lake, the river down the road, and let's go get baptized. Amen. Hallelujah. And they get the new converts, they get baptized in water, come out the water, deliverance, healing, baptism of the Holy Ghost, praise God. But we read in the book of Acts that Cornelius and his house, they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, right? They received that before water baptism. So that means we can get baptized in the Holy Spirit before we even go in water. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm also one of those. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost before going underwater. You see what I'm saying? But I still got baptized in water to fulfill all righteousness. My Lord and Savior did. There's a spiritual blessing from the obedience. My brother and my sister, you need to get baptized. If you were baptized as a, as a Catholic, that wasn't real baptism. You need to get that one real baptism. So you could tell people, I just took a bath before, but I had my real baptism. And we're going to have baptisms periodically on Zoom at the Remnant Revival Outreach Center. You can get baptized on Zoom. It has nothing to do with the person. 
The person dunking you means nothing. You're being baptized into Christ and rising with Christ. That's why in the Bible, Paul says, I'm glad I baptized none of you. And he was talking to the church, a, a, a church that he built. He was saying, I'm glad I baptized none of you because some of you are saying, you know, I'm of Apollos and I'm of Paul. Apollos was his friend, another apostle. They were idolizing these men of God like, oh, I got baptized by Paul. I got baptized by Apollos. They were idolizing him. And he was like, you guys lost the whole point of it. You missed it. It had nothing to do with us. I'm glad I didn't baptize you because you didn't understand. You got baptized into Christ. You got baptized with Jesus. You died on that cross with him under the water and you resurrected in a new body. You, you lost that. You lost it. You don't understand. You see what I'm saying? So it's not about the person who's there dunking you. That has nothing to do with it. The key is to understand what water baptism is. The key is to understand the gospel. Then you can go and get baptized over Zoom. We're going to do baptisms on Zoom. People are going to get dunked underwater and come up and it's going to be true baptism. And what's going to happen is the Holy Ghost is going to move. Devil's going to come out. People are going to get healed. People are going to be, get their, get their plan, prayer language, prophesying, baptizing the Holy Spirit and the fire and the power of God. It's going to all happen on Zoom. And I'm not going to even be there. I'm just going to be praying, praying over Zoom. But that's how powerful our God is. He says he's an omnipresent spirit. God is an omnipresent God. That means he's everywhere at once. So I, ho I hope this broke down that revelation for you. Some of you are like, oh, I got baptized as a Catholic. You need to get baptized for real, believing and surrendering. Some of you might have been baptized like five, six times, but never surrendered, never surrendered, never gave your life to God. You need to get that one true baptism. And you could just tell people I've, I've taken baths in churches. That's it. So some of you might say, well, I did get baptized and I did surrender. But then after a year, I went back to the world. Keep your faith in that one baptism, okay? If that one ba baptism that you got, you truly surrendered, that's the one baptism. You just are coming back like a prodigal son or daughter. That's it. You don't need to get rebaptized. The water don't do nothing, okay? And you also don't need to freak out about it like, oh, should I get baptized or not? Look, if you, just get baptized. If you're freaking out about it and you're like, I think I might need to, go get baptized. God's not sitting here like, you've been baptized three times, you're condemned to hell. He don't. He's not tripping, man. Our God is not a religious God. If, you, if it's going to clear your conscience, he wants you to have a clear conscience. So go get baptized. If it's if you want to get baptized and it's a new season for you and you're just like, man, look, I, I don't think I surrendered like that. And just get baptized, man. Go. Let, let, let's do it. Let, let's, let's, let's do it over Zoom or do it at the Orlando, um, the, the Remnant Revival Center out here in um, Central Florida, near Orlando. You know, you could do that. It doesn't matter. We do it every service every service we want you guys to have a clear conscience and come up a new creation in christ and, and the, the the key is repentance the key is surrender the key the key is change that's what that's the most important thing that's what i'm concerned about the most does this person really believe and are they changing in their heart then the rest will follow it would all be added on so let's see is there anything else with baptism i think that's good man it, it's okay that, let's do one more thing the name of jesus and the father son and the holy spirit look there I was just reading about this. I was reading about this um, and it was a book called uh, God's Generals. It talks about revival culture and a bunch of um, different people in the faith over the last few um, few hundred years, a uh, few centuries that that sparked revival, you know, that God used to bring many to Christ. And it talked about where this whole like oneness doctrine like came came about and like separated the church. Um, some people were saying be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Some were saying the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So if you read the book of, you know, Matthew, one of the Gospels, it talks, Jesus says, go preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then if you read the book of Acts, it talks about be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. So what we do here at the Remnant Revival Outreach Center, just to give you guys a revelation, is we say, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Die with Christ and we dunk you under the water, rise with Christ. We knock both out. Because some people get super religious and think that you have to say it a certain way. You have to know who you're being baptized into, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Yeshua, um, uh, 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 the light of the world. It's not about it's not about the actual translation that comes out. It's about the heart. So if your heart is set on Jesus and you say Yeshua instead of Jesus, it doesn't mean that you have to go back and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Or if you say in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, if you understand that Jesus is the fullness bodily and, and, and you know that the Son is Jesus and you get baptized, that you're good. You're good to go. You don't have to go get rebaptized. Baptism is an outward display of what already happened inside. That's the key. You need to understand that. Amen. All right. God bless you guys.
Make sure you like this video, comment, subscribe. Let's run up the algorithm and so I can keep making more. God bless.